What's going on, you guys? I hope everyone is doing well. I'm gonna get another shave in today. So this is my second to last shave using the BBS1 razor before um, I am selling it off. But um, anyway, there's a couple people that have been, um, I'm gonna throw on some of this kokum butter and maybe I'm one of these people in the community that is maybe a little more known for kind of using cocoa butter for all the different things, whether it's for uh, using it in kind of like the lather, um, by putting it on the puck um, before I load, or um, you know, using it as a pre-shave. This is I'm just demonstrating. You know, if you wanted to use it as a pre-shave, that's okay. Um, the same can be done with the mango butter as well, but. Um, I particularly like using it for part of my post shave as well. So um, I don't really have a preference as long as it just gets used. It seems to seems to be what my skin likes. So um, yeah, people have been saying they have been liking uh, using the the cocum or the mango butter at night. Um, I, I remember that um, Alessandro um, on the website for SV, because that's originally where I was starting to get it years ago, was they sell it in their tins. He recommends that you can use it the night before um, you shave in the morning um, so that it helps soften your, your face and your beard um, overnight. So, um, yeah, you, I don't really care how I use it. Just incorporating it somewhere in the shave or somewhere before or after the shave, it, it seems to help my skin. So, okay, real quick, I was using this a lot last month, um, not exclusively, but when I was rotating a lot of the different soaps, I prefer to kind of just stick with one brush. Um, and this PAA brush I was really enjoying. Um, I might as well mention, I'm going to use my older Plasson, but again, anytime I mention the Plasson brand, I think it's important to share that although I have a preference and I really enjoy Badger brushes, I am not under the impression that they are better or superior to any of the other brush types. I very much enjoy this soft floppy brush. Um, I would understand why many people don't. Um, this is one of the other Plasson brushes that I got, which is, I don't think this is a vintage um, on, but this one is a closer to being more current. I don't know, this might be 10, 15 years old. I, I really don't know. But um, today, as far as soap, this is, I think, the second time that I'm using the Desert Vetiver that came out um, in like spring of last year. So I have a little bit of bloom water. You guys will see I don't, I don't put a lot of water on the, the shave soap. I'll show you guys the brush. Let me shake it out real quick. So this is the horn handle plus on. And although it doesn't have any other additional stickers, I would assume that this has um, only been marked pure badger. So uh, at whatever time this was made, it was maybe a European white, maybe it's a high mountain white. I, I tend to think that this is probably a high mountain white grade, but I, I really don't care anymore. Um, it gets to a point where the only way that you are really going to know if you like a brush is if you have it in hand and you're able to try it and see if it lathers the way that you like or if it feels the way that you want on your face. You guys can see this will pick up. Um, you know, I think that there's different definitions that one person or a group of people could come up with for what high mount white means. When it comes to this brush, the reason why I'm choosing to, to use it is I've got four days beard growth and this high mount white brush. Um, it tends to have a little bit of backbone from the individual hairs. It's, it's a little more resilient. So load up 
too much of this. Okay, so I'll scoop off the proto lather and we'll base lather. Had some nice shaves last week uh, using Mystic Water. Actually had some very nice easy times uh, lathering it with the PAA synthetic. But um, pop in some of the bloom water. SV had re-released Dolomiti and the Beta 4.3 um, soap formula maybe in October. And I uh, decided if I was going to grab that, I might as well snag the Desert Vetiver because I had waited to pick it up since I was getting kind of some new hardware purchases last year. So I was kind of holding off, but Right now I'm pretty good on brushes. I'm gonna be downsizing that a little bit, downsizing a little bit on my hardware for safety razors. So I'm looking forward to this year just kind of getting some more similar setups for my daily shaves. BBO, BBS1 is just a little more aggressive, so I've just been trying to get these last shaves on camera in case anybody is, you know, wanting one last little review. But yeah, it's 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 a nice razor. It's just a little more efficient than really what I think my my face likes. It, ten, it tends to take care of the beard really well. So I think what I'll try on the shave is we'll go against the grain first pass. This is the second shave using the feather, feather DE blade. This SV um, Desert Vetiver. I'm I'm not really in love with the scent, but I will say that there has been quite a few experiences with certain SV soaps that um, I may like the combination of the the scents. I still may not love something and I think some of the some of the soaps after you get some use on them they they mellow out or in some you know some people's experience they um, become stronger so again that's also why I tend not to kind of make make my reviews so you know definitive as far as you know what you should take um, as far as like my experience being what you're going to experience. Um, I know one person had said that this uh, specific desert vetiver had kind of made their skin a little hot or there was a little bit of a reaction. And in general, most of the reviews that I see of SV um, don't mention skin reactions. So when I read that, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that that person is doing something wrong or that they don't like SV. It just means that, you know, if someone doesn't have the same experience as me, it's, it's very possible that whatever uh, experience they have is just as valid as, you know, me saying I like this, I like this. So I'm gonna just go one more little bit of water. Hopefully I won't have to load any more soap for following passes, but okay. 
just been lathering a little bit differently these last month, last two months. Try not to spend as much time on the, the face lathering and maybe doesn't have quite the same volume that I'm used to, to getting, but okay. So let me just get a little bit of alum on my hands. Once again, this is the BBS1 razor, the aluminum razor rock handle, and the stealth slant. And this is a feather DE blade on its second use. We'll go with a against the grain first pass. Light with the pressure. So someone, I forget what we were talking about, but I was I was mentioning the way that my beard grows. So real quick, I know I was going against the grain, but if you guys see, my beard will kind of grow outward, um, diagonally. On this side of my face, it grows um, more diagonal, um, whereas this one, it goes a little less diagonal. It, it still does, but it's a little more vertical. So for me, going against the grain, I kind of go towards my nose, whereas this one, I do kind of go more upward and at an angle. So um, it's kind of good. But it helps to see what this can do at one against the grain first pass. I'm looking forward to, like I said, just downsizing with some more gear. Something kind of stress relieving about just kind of having less stuff. That felt good. So far, so good. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit of a bummer that I didn't give the feather a shot um, earlier on this razor, but it's all right. Um, guys can see or if you really care but I basically kind of hold the razor at that angle sorry my hand shaking but I don't know if that helps I don't know if you guys are able to see I was chatting with uh, one of the viewers, one of you guys that kind of become uh, friends with, and someone was talking about doing a cold water shave. And uh, I guess that person was saying that it worked, worked well. 
I'm sure I will um, revisit doing like an ice water shave or a cold water shave. Only thing that I'm not really, it's not that I don't like it, I, I don't really care for doing the, the badger brushes even the lather with cold water. I think that the, the natural hair brushes, you know, or in my case, the badger brushes, um, I don't think they work quite as well when, when you're not soaking them in some warm water, especially if you do like a, like a boar brush. Now, what's funny about this little spot, this I'm pretty sure is an, it's an ingrown hair that I've had for quite a while from last year. Um, it doesn't give me issues, but it's kind of like you feel like there's like a little dried pimple or a little scab that's just a little bit in there and it doesn't want to come out. So luckily it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It's just one of those things where you try to kind of pick at it and it doesn't really do anything. Okay, so let's just do a quick little rinse. So far we're feeling pretty good. Not surprising, we got a, you know, a couple little, little spots. I think I've just been seeing enough people with those um, electric water spritzers, little sprayers. I kind of, I think I'm going to revisit that. It's easier than scooping up some water in my hand. And not that that's a, a big deal, but I do kind of like to do what I can to make my shapes a little more seamless. All right. Face feels really good. Um, with this being only my second use with this shave soap, I'd, I'd prefer not to really give you guys too many comments. That's always kind of been my deal is um, when it comes to SV, I do feel like I can give you guys maybe a little more of an accurate um, personal review. And part of that is because um, I probably have more experience with SV than most of the other soap brands that I've used. So just to kind of quickly recollect, I have a pretty good experience, you know, finishing some Mike's Natural Soaps. Um, when Barrister and Man came out, they, uh, they had what was called the White Label. That was like a, a tallow, lanolin, cocum butter, shea butter, castor oil, um, coconut milk. Those are some of the, the main ingredients. And that was kind of his standard formula for, for quite a little while. I'm just using very little pressure. This is good. I'll uh, I'll continue using this desert vetiver for a little bit to dial in to see how it performs differently than the other SV soap. So that was kind of what I was saying is. If I give you guys an SV review, it's not going to be as simple and cut and dry as I like it. So buy it. Um, I'm probably going to be someone that's going to say, like, you know, if I had to suggest why well, you should buy this one over something else. Um, I think I was reading on the Il Rosoio um, Italian Forum. They're the ones that. 2014, I think, were um, 
helping Alessandro um, be kind of like the beta testers for the earlier SV prototype soaps or um, earlier beta formulas. And I think Or it might have been somebody on Dan Fine Shape, maybe it was Uki. But um, Tundra Arctica, I think, is a very, very nice um, kind of technical soap that doesn't really build quite the same lather structure, so to speak. Um, maybe not as good on using the the lingo or understanding when you know people are talking about low structure versus high structure. But these beta 4.3 formulas um, from SV perform uh, pretty similar to one another. They, they still do have their unique feelings, but if I were to give you like three of the very thirsty SV soaps, maybe a Puntia, if you were to happen to have the Flying Mango, um, that's another thirsty one. The other ones that are thirsty, I'm trying to think, Cosmo, that's the third one. Those are all going to have a much, like once you pour that water into the, the bowl or on your face, um, that lather density and hydration level is much different than, in my opinion, the Tundra Arctica. But again, take, take my um, experience or comments with a grain of salt because I've heard the reverse where some people said that Tundra Arctica is the most thirsty soap that they've used or maybe amongst SB. Um, and again, I don't discount those people, their experiences, what their experience is. Splashing that water on, I think it, it leaves a nice residual slickness. Um, this one's got the, the date oil. I think that's close enough for me. I could do this kind of across the grain here, but um, it's not quite like if I did in a, a with the grain pass with like the carbon, where I could follow up with that third third pass. These are some of the details that usually when I'm shaving on camera, I'm not as, I'm not as fussy about getting. Okay, I'll give the coke and butter go. I'll just put a small little bit of coke and butter on and then I'll throw in the desert vetiver aftershave and we can see if there's much of a response, but um, I wasn't dying to use this soap because of the scent. I will say that um, for some odd reason, I was kind of, last month was a little, a little more stressful compared to some of the months in 2020. So I'm happy that we're in February. Um, if David Gonzalez is watching this, um, it was his birthday yesterday. So I'll just give him a happy belated birthday. He's getting in another shave with that carbon plus plus base plate I think, uh, this week. Um, what were they talking about? But yeah, the the scent to me doesn't really. Um, I'm not I'm not 100% sold on. So again, that's why sometimes I've said that. SV is a little bit more of a technical choice for me, um, and that's not to say that I don't like the perfuming. I just, um, the ones that really stand out to me that I really like are Mirto di Sardegna, um, 
that one I really enjoy the scent of. I really enjoy the scent of their Colonia, um, which you can get from Bulgus. It's, it's kind of like the Italian cologne. The Filchi Aromatica. It'll burn. Really not too bad. Maybe like a 3 out of 10, just kind of really around here. I think one splash is probably good. But yeah, what I would expect, um, just to kind of give you guys a preview if you're seeing any videos in the, the future, you'll see one more shave this week on video with the BBS1 and the Feather. That will be it. You will see much more carbon shaves um, moving forward after that. Um, it's pretty much what I am sticking with as far as gear that I have and am going to use. Um, I still do have my R41. I have my aluminum and my stainless steel Lupo. Um, I'm just going to be keeping those in case I happen to go on a trip and would prefer not to take my carbon. And I can kind of take those as my razors to travel with. Um, I really love the shapes that those give. So it's not like my um, affinity to just use the carbon is, is because I am professing that the shaves are the best in the world. They just are very close to what I want in my shave. The way that my face feels after, I can get a very comfortable shave, which to me is a little more important than how close and, and getting to baby butt smooth. Um, what I tend to do is if I try to go for that baby butt smooth shave, it's not that I can't get it. It's just usually at the expense of razor burn and irritation. Um, so I've tried to kind of allow my desire for those very close shaves to kind of be set aside and shoot for a very consistent feeling shave, even if they're still beard on, you know, let's say areas like here, maybe around this area. Um, and you guys will just also see how I'm, you know, like today going against the grain first pass. I don't think that it really hurt me. I mean, there's really no more little spots kind of showing up under here. So I've mentioned that before, you know, it's kind of interesting. Everyone has different reactions when they see someone shave on video. Um, what does it mean when the shaver has a nick, has a, a cut, you know? Um, to me, I do kind of consider it a different thing. I remember years ago, I had a commissory, a traditional commissory, and I slipped or wasn't paying attention, whatever you want to say, and just gave myself a really good slice. I think that's different than when I'm shaving against the green and you guys see those those little guys. Um, if, if you think that it's more or less equivalent or the same, that, that's fine. But um, for me, by the end of the shave, if I'm not having a bunch of these little tiny necks and they don't perf <laughs> keep profusely, you know, bleeding, then I can deal with them in the shave. I'd rather deal with nicks than razor burn. I think the razor burn tends to last for at least an hour or two. So, but yeah, um, when I'm done with this um, later this week, I'll continue trying this feather blade in the carbon razors. Um, when that feather's done, I'll go back to Kai. Um, I'll kind of stick with the Kai for however long. And um, at most, whatever time frame it is, you guys may see me using the Titanium Plus Plus base plate. I, I may try to snag a uh, minus base plate in Titanium fairly soon. I think those are going to be the main two razors I'll kind of start this kind of first quarter of the year off with. And um, you guys will primarily see me probably rotating through my Badger brushes and using some of the SV soaps more consecutively. So let's say maybe for the next week or two. I'll stick with Desert Vetiver, but um, I'm likely to, might as well throw this on real quick before I hop off some hyaluronic acid. Too much, just like three pumps. And um, oh, here. I will be 
using, hold on a second. I'll, if the weather kind of stays cool, I'll definitely go back to using some Mirto di Sardinia for a while. Um, I'm trying to think maybe the Cosmo as well. Um, kind of go based on some of the, the scents. I guess we'll just pull this lather out. How does it look to you guys? Yeah, I think it looks good. It looks a little foamy in the middle. You maybe can't see it. It's it's not quite like a really, really dense but good yeah this this is the most complicated SV scent it's it's got a lot of different scent components and uh, I'm just hoping that the uh, the mixture of the scents um, over time will just kind of mellow out that's definitely been my experience with some of their soaps is that um, with more use they will change a little bit how much they change or how will they change? It's it's likely to either be different for you or you may not have that experience. So um, anyway, I think that was pretty much it as far as what I wanted to cover. Um, I really enjoy this razor. I just have kind of moved forward from feeling like I need to keep it because I've had a lot of shaves over the last like six years with it. Six, seven, I can't remember when I got it, but. I'm hoping that whoever is going to be uh, getting it next, it will work well for them. And um, I'll, I'll probably talk a little bit more about just kind of what I think about products that are more rare or harder to find pieces of shave gear that are more or less unavailable in the current market, probably in my next shave. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. It's been great getting your guys' comments. Um, I know I'm a little more lax lately on getting to reply. So my apologies. I've just been a little bit more lazy when it comes to these, you know, shave videos. So I just want to let you guys know, I, I appreciate you guys watching and um, just kind of interacting. So I assume that once I kind of get into this month and I'm not rotating a bunch of gear, I'll have a little more time set aside to figure out some ways to bring some new content to the channel or whatnot. So anyway, take care you guys and I hope you have a good one.